From the world of AV programming and control with James King, I'm Steve Greenblatt, and this is Ask the Programmer. Hey, James, it's good to be back with you for the wrap-up of our Infocom series. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. And I mean, we are getting very close to Infocom, and I, I can't wait to see people in person. And I'm looking forward to our discussion to wrap it up. Wonderful. If you um, if you haven't uh, caught our last couple of episodes, we had um, Kate Atkins, we had Mike Krejci, and um, those were episodes 110 and 111. And we um, are going to today just talk, uh, James and I are going to share some of our experiences, some of our tips, some of the things that we're looking forward to, and also put out a call to uh, programmers because we want you to find us, reach out to us, and we're going to... Uh, help to uh, uh, encourage that a bit. So um, I guess, James, you, you've shared on the last couple of episodes, some of the things that um, you've learned and, and um, some of your recommendations, but, but what, what's a couple of things that um, are going to, maybe you'll do a little bit differently this year that, that uh, you, you know, from, from what you've done in the past? Um, trying not to over uh, schedule myself. Um, that's a big one, not to overschedule yourself because there's so much going on, so much you want to see. Um, so it's hard because like I said, I, I want to do everything. So overscheduling yourself is very easy to do this week. Uh, so that is something I'm going to try to work on and not take every, uh, meeting request and, um, really try to stay in one place and better shoes, much better shoes than I've done in the past. <laughs> always, always a good tip is to be having comfortable shoes and sometimes multiple pair just in case one fail you. So um, I, I highly agree and make sure that you uh, don't want to go down with a blister on the first day because it's going to make the rest of the time pretty miserable. Um, I, I, I like what you're saying. And it almost kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, a book, uh, the one thing, and there's another book essentialism. It's, you know, really kind of focusing on what's most important and, and not, um, over committing yourself and, and saying no, if it's not a hell yes. Um, so I like that where you're, uh, going with that. Um, I, I, um, I think it is, it, it it's almost, um, a uh, it's a given that there's going to be things that you're going to miss and that, that, that there are things that are going, you're, you're not going to be able to see. And, and it goes by so quickly after all of that anticipation. Um, for, for me, one of the things that, uh, that I think is important, I, I like to have some type of a structure in my day. I like to have appointments and I like to be able to know that I'm going to see certain people at certain times and, and get um, get, get that, um, plan in place the way I work, because I'm afraid that I'm going to get distracted and sidetracked, and then I'm going to get off course. And days that I, that, that happens, I feel like I was busy the whole time, but I don't necessarily feel like at the end of the day, I had a lot of quality conversations and were able to check things off of my list. So that, that's, that's one, one of the things that I, I find quite important. Um, do, do you, um, do, how, how much of your time do you, um, do, do you book appointments versus, um, walk and be more, um, more flexible and more available? So a lot of this is, is changing as my role changed. So the first infocom I went to one, it was a lot smaller, uh, but also I, I was unknown. Like I went on my own. Uh, none of my reps were really there from where I used to work. Um, you know, it was a small show. So really I had no appointments. I kind of just walked the floor um, and then attended the education sessions. Last year in Vegas, and a lot of my new reps, like I got connected with uh, Frank from main campus. He was going, so he, um, connected me a lot of people are like all right here we're having these meetings we're having these discussions so i had a lot of that there was also things that we need to 
take care of. So we had meetings to direct, uh, address that. Plus, I was very uh, active with the HEPMA, and we had meetings through, through HEPMA with people. Um, so that ten that took a lot of my time. And actually, I didn't go to any of the education sessions last year uh, just because the timing just didn't allow it uh, with the new job and all that stuff. This year, I, I scheduled the education classes. Uh, I got a couple meetings coming up uh, with folks who reach out and say, hey, come swing by, see what we have type um, products. Mm -hmm. And then really, I'm just going to probably sit and use HEPMA's booth as my home base kind of thing. That's kind of cool, actually, because, you know, if you could tell people where to find you and maybe you tell them these are the times that I'm going to be there, or at least if somebody goes there and says, hey, I'm looking for James you can, and, and you haven't met them or they don't know you, you have people there that can get in touch with you. I, I like that a lot. I, for me, on the other hand, I, I don't have like a home base like that. And we do a lot of walking. Um, what we do is we'll try to tell people we'll be at these events or we're staying in this hotel or um, try to make sure that we are, or pop in to show our face at the popular hangouts and and um, see who we could find there because it's it's a lot harder when people can't find you and quite honestly you know we, we all have phones and we could text and call but it, it you almost get in, into like a blur and and like even your phone is is um you're not so responsive to because it's buzzing and and ringing and you know and a lot of times it's reminders for things you know so it, it it's hard to keep up with all of that yes it's uh very hard and the one thing i found to be useful i know you said you like to schedule your day is i actually created a calendar that is just infocom events so there's nothing else on my count uh, that calendar just Infocom. And then what I'll do is while I'm at Infocom, I'll hide my other calendars. So I'm not seeing things I don't need to wor not be worried about. I'm just seeing all the uh, Infocom events. That's really cool, actually. And it, and if you could have like a master calendar like that, it, it also helps you to share it with other people too that, you know, want to know where you're at or, or like, you know, um, either colleagues or coworkers. Um, yes. What uh, do you do you expect to see certain technology? Is there something that that you are you know other than vendors reaching out to you to say, hey, come visit? We have something new or announcement. Is do you go there with um, trying to solve a particular problem? Do you go there looking for um, something, scouting out uh, products that you might use in the future? I don't really go to the show to find a product to solve a need. Like I don't sit there and go, well, you know, I have this going on. I need to find a product. I go there to find partnerships, uh, build relationships, um, have communications with manufacturers. So either tell them problems I'm currently having or know that I have those relationships that if I do come in a problem, it's like, you know, I got this weird thing. You know, I met Steve from Control Concept at uh, Infocom. He might be able to help me, you know, pick up the phone, reach out, building that relationship. So I, I really use that, what I look for is going there and sitting down with reps and people and be like, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a partner not to be sold to. I'm not looking for a product. Um and then I, I also look, I guess it's the programmer in me. I, I look to see how technology advancing, like who's putting AI in their product and is it true AI or is it machine learning and what kind of security parts are in there? Like I'll get into all those things, but I never go be like, you know, I, I need to find a uh, matrix switcher that'll do uh, SDI and, and HDMI and USB-C. Like I, I, I have yet to do that, but I'm more looking for partnership. So um, kind of talk about that a little bit, because that's a good one. And I, I and you've said that more than once. Um, it, does that come in the form of just people that you meet, that you feel you click with, that you feel like um, uh, 
you you can um, trust and rely on, or does it come more from somebody that is um, affiliated with a particular organization, or is um, somebody that you follow that you just want to go and and you know see what they're like in person? Um, how 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 does how does a, what what describes a partner, or how do how do you find one? So I I think it all depends because all above what you said. So getting out on the socials. So I'll, ta I'll tackle that part first, getting out on the social, you know, like making the connections like you and I have, or with Tim Albright from AV Nation and CTI or Mike Critchie, who was just on last episode, um, getting out and making those connections. Um, like I probably will never use control concept um, in my work. So. Not saying I won't, but I, like I said, I have yet to come across in my 14 years in work in higher ed to need control concept. But I at least know that Steve is there, that if I come across a one day where, yes, I need a third party programmer, I can reach out to Steve. Or even better yet, and I've done this a couple of times, is there's other connections I have with people would be like, yeah, I'm looking for a third party program. I'd be, hey, I never use them personally, but check out Control Concept. Um, or I'm just using that as an example. Other mm -hmm. people. So the socials is definitely a uh, one aspect, but also manufacturers. Like I've I've always told this to manufacturers is I do not have brand loyalty. I have loyalty to my university and the students. I need to get the education done. So I need a partner who I can sit there and be like, hey, I'm having a problem and let's come up with a solution. And he said, uh, and someone who's not going to blow me off, someone, you know, and I had some good partners back, back on the East Coast. I have some good partners here, uh, here on the West Coast. Like I back, back on the East Coast, I had somebody I called up. I'm like, hey, I was like, I have this high profile um, a room. We have your device in here, the one of those uh, tractable cables. One of the cables broke. I was like, I, I need to get this replaced. They're like, all right. They process the replace. And he's like, I'll be there tomorrow with my personal one to swap out. So they were there the next day. Why they were waiting for the company to do the whole RMA? They The rep actually brought their personal one that they had at their home kit. And we hooked up, got the room going. We had no downtime. Um, another building partnership was, uh, I, I won't name the company, but we had a one rep I had great relationships with on the East Coast. I I know if I called that rep, I would get top-notch servers. And I also have other higher ed connections who have the same rep, says the same thing. Well, back channel on the... Um, the higher ed channels, the back channel, one of the people put out like, hey, I'm looking, I have this unique space. I'm looking to different products. And a couple of us say, hey, looking to this company. And they came back and go, we have, we don't have a good relationship with them. Like they have, like they, you know, ignored us and stuff. I'm like, I find that odd. I was like, I never had that. I was like, call this person. So I made that connection for them, even though I don't use that company anymore, made that connection. And now they're getting the service that they require and the need. So it's almost like the the degree of Kevin Bacon. Right. You know, right. Everyone's connected. And that's what I'm kind of looking at. Sometimes it's stuff I need. Sometimes I'm making connections and partners for other people. So so really it's going there, building a network, trying to interact with people and see what they're like in person, see what type of people they are, see what the the face behind the name or the voice is like um, be, be get have, develop a rapport or a comfort level. It sounds like means a lot. And um, uh, you know, I, I guess that could exist on the show floor, but that could also be done um, over a meal or, or, or just hanging out at an event or just um, possibly even talking about something, uh, you know, some type of a personal connection, which I guess, you know, comes down to, um, we, we all are people and we all, and we, as much as we live in a tech world, we all have to 
engage with one another. And, and I mean, that's personally one of the things that I look at at, at events is, is, and Infocom especially is that the amount of conversations and, and um, topics and connections and, and just interaction that you can accomplish in this week, although very grueling, um, because it's, it, it's, it's a lot to do, could take months to do if you weren't um, in person and everybody wasn't all in the same place. Yeah. And sometimes having those connections and those relationships allow you to go into deeper problems. Like I, because of the connections I made either at Infocom or throughout other connections, I had no reservations of, you know, being a little stern um, with a partner who, you know, kind of got little, I hate using this word, but a little lazy, like some things happen. Uh, I had no problem calling them up. And I'm like, you know, you need to fix this. This is not acceptable. You need to fix it. And they did. And that's what's great. And because you can have that relationship. Now, if I didn't have that relationship, it's almost like, okay, am I really, uh, can I call them out? Can I do this? Or am I, you know, just got to take it. Um, I, I had this conversation with one rep who they brought down their, it was very new, early stages, AV over IP device. Uh, they had a little network all set up in their road case they were showing to us we we're like hey this is pretty cool i went to the rep because i had a relationship with them and partnership i'm like let me have the device play in my environment they're like yeah sure no problem they gave me the gear i started playing with it they called me like a week later they're like hey how things are going i'm like it's shit i'm like it doesn't work cause too much problems, a lot of bandwidth issues. Like I just started like all that stuff. And they're like, okay, we'll go back and fix it. And they did. And there's a lot of things that get got fixed. But at least I had that partner. So we knew it was mutually understood that like it was a respect. It wasn't like I was just trashing their product. They knew it was not a good product for our environment and that they had to make changes. No, I I uh I can appreciate that and people that are able to be comfortable with you to have that type of conversation and, and be willing to um, talk openly and accept feedback. And th there's a lot of respect that comes with that. Um, being that we're a, a podcast that is built on, on community and, um, and, and is looking to uh, develop a voice for programmers and and um, help to um, bring programmers together. Um, do you think that there is a place where programmers can be more uh, have their voice heard more in Infocom? Do you think that this that that there are um, opportunities for programmers' opinions to be heard? Uh, you know, is this is this a good good thing for them to be? pushing to attend, not, not so much for the learning or, you know, which I believe is important, but also for, you know, being involved in, and like the, get, get it being heard because, you know, a lot of times the rubber hits the road with programmers. Uh, yes, I do think it could be a good environment for that. Um, you have to build that connection first and have that relationship uh, which you can do on the show for, but to be able, I mean, we're programmers, so we're going to have challenges. We're going to have to make product A and product B talk to each other and they may not do it nicely. Um, so going to those ma manufacturers and being like, this is our pain point. This is what's keeping us up at night. This is what taking a five minute job and making it 10 hours job, um, and they can go back to their team and their engineers and be like, yeah, like, let's look at this. Um, having those conversations, I've done that with programming uh, where I sat on the uh, floor and gone through the demos they had. And I'd be like, hey, that's great. But 
it would be better if you had these features and add this option and add this API and add this. And they're like, all right. And they actually took notes and they're like, we're going to back to our engineers whip this and see what we can come up with. Uh, again, if I came in as nobody off the street and I tried pitching that to them at their booth, it probably wouldn't be well accepted, but because we were building a relationship and we had that connection, I was able to work with that and understand what their product was trying to do and say, hey, this would make it better. Even if it doesn't work in my environment, this would just make it more appealing to others, people, to other programmers, other higher ed or other businesses. Uh, all those, you know, having that robust API that's open are having the different ways to connect and having the security. Like sometimes those things are over missed by the manufacturers and they need to be talked to by people like us, boots on the ground saying, hey, these are our pain points. I, I like that a lot. And I hope that that's encouragement, not only for programmers to ask to attend or see where they could fit in, but also for those who um, are granting the permission for programmers to attend or encouraging them to, because that's that's important. And I, I'd like to see more programmers uh, be at these types of events so that we, we can find our place and be uh, demonstrating the value that uh, programmers provide. Um, as we wrap this up and, and then we're at the end, we're just gonna talk about a, something fun just to, to get, um, uh, encourage everybody to to interact with each other but um what what are what are a couple of tips or um recommendations that you have for people that you may not have already shared uh, bring water uh you need to say well hydrate yes this year's in florida so it's going to be humid uh bring change of clothes if you need to uh if you're someone who sweat a lot because you may not have time to go back to your hotel um uh, carry things with you like your laptop and all that stuff so if you have a bag or something you can throw those things in that's always good and don't think you're going to sit there and get work done because the wi-fi there kind of is horrible uh even here in vegas at the convention center the wi-fi can be pretty bad so don't think you're going to get actually sit there and get work done uh, use it as a break from work and focus on the show yeah that those are really good i i I, I have a list and I could probably um, put a link to some of the recommendations I've had in the past, I've provided in the past, but uh, I'm a big proponent of making sure that you have business cards and that you're exchanging them. Or if somebody doesn't have one, make sure you have a place to take notes and write down. Mike my, my Krejci in the last episode talked about taking pictures and documenting so you can remember. It's a blur. So if you're not writing stuff down and making notes, and even when you get a business card, write on it why you talk to this person, because a lot of times you get back and you're like, I, I don't know where I got these cards from. So um, the, those I think are important. Um, you know, if you're trying to build a network and you're trying to make connections or you're trying to get, um, you know, some more visibility, uh, you, you have to work at it. You, ha you have to put yourself out there. You have to not be afraid to go up and talk to people. You have to be a little bit more social than you're probably comfortable doing, but also um, try to figure out a way that you can be found, um, whether it's wearing your, your logo, whether it's um, having a personal brand, whether it's um, doing stuff on social. Um, and also, as, as I mentioned earlier, um, be try to, you know, find a crowd of people that will help you to get, introduced or you could always lean on to to know where to go when uh, you don't have direction um, and then to me the, the the biggest value about infocom is afterward because if you're not following up afterward to maintain those conversations and and make those connections and and um, do something with what you got from going to the show then I'm not sure that you got really what you came for in the show. I mean, we all like to have fun and don't have too much, but, but we all will have fun. Um, it, but, but the, the value where you're going to see a measurable difference is in, is in um, afterward. And then in, when you're going for consecutive years and it, 
becomes a time where people are coming up to you. Um, like James said, you know, whether it's being on a show or doing a class or whatever that is, um, you know, that, that, you know, putting in the time and making, um, making people, um, know that you value them. So, um, James, why don't you mention, uh, talk a little bit about the idea you had about, uh, trying to get, uh, do something fun and, and, um, you know, get, get programmers knowing each other a bit. Yeah. So, uh, Steve and I were talking and I came up with this idea is, uh, if you are at Infocom, try to get a selfie with five programmers. I have the first one who can send Steve and or I uh, selfies with their five programmers. We'll have you as a guest on our show. Uh, use the hashtag uh, as the programmer. You can use uh, Infocom 23 as well. Uh, definitely get those selfies. And if you have an as a programmer sticker already, that's bonus points to you. And I'll add another bonus. If you can get a picture of Steve and I together, that's even more of a bonus point for you. Fantastic. And uh, um, it, we'll, we'll definitely have some of those stickers at the Hetma booth um, because that's a good place that you'll be able to find um, uh, James and be have a landing place. Um, and then, you know, we'll, we'll carry them with us as well. Um, James, how can people uh, get in touch with you, um, make plans to connect with you at the show and, um, and keep up with what you're doing? So again, on Twitter, AB underscore James King, Google me, you'll find me anywhere. Hetma is involved uh, at the show. Hetma, we're going to be there. We're going to be there big 20 by 20 booth. Our booth number is 4489. Um, when I'm not doing an education session or walking around the show for, I will be most likely stationed there. So uh, swing by, say hi, check out our approved classroom and everything else that HEPMA has to offer. Wonderful. I, I um, will definitely be checking that out and, and you uh, have always been a big fan of HEPMA. So I'm uh, looking forward to seeing how that progresses. And I know that it's going to be a big, big splash this year. Um, for me, you could reach me at Steve Greenblatt on social media. You could reach my company, Control Concepts at controlconcepts.net. Um, a couple of Notable things. One, I'm doing a session on understanding personality types on Tuesday, the 13th from four to six um, with Brittany DeCessory from my team. And um, it's a great session. And if you want to learn how to uh, build better relationships and be more comfortable working with people that are like you and not like you and just understanding people in general, it's a uh, an interactive session and it, it's just a lot of fun. And I guarantee that you'll walk away with some tangible takeaways. And then one of my favorites is always the AV Nation tweet up, which is on Wednesday, uh, the 14th uh, from also four to six. And uh, please uh, check that out and uh, make sure that you uh, attend and make sure that um, you look for James and me and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll be be there and uh, and and that's a great way to meet people that you have uh, met online or have listened to on podcasts and um, we uh, we look forward to seeing you there and um, please continue to listen and share these episodes hopefully these have been been helpful for you um, we um, want to hear more from you so please uh, you know come and see us and reach out. Uh, you can catch us on video on YouTube as well as audio on Google and Apple Podcasts. And um, we look forward to seeing you at Infocom. So until then, this has been Ask the Programmer. <laughs>